Uh, and I'd like to introduce uh, Ewan Cameron, our senior software engineer for the architecture and desktop team to talk about it. Ewan? Thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you. It's great to be here this morning. So if we have a look at the developer options that you have as desktop developers today. You can start down at Arc Reader. A lot of you like the deployment option of Arc Reader because it's free. Uh, and you can continue to move up to, through ArcGIS Explorer, has a little bit more capabilities, through on uh, engine. That's our, really our professional GIS toolkit for developers building standalone applications. And then up to desktop, and you can build extensions and plugins to the professional GIS software for the desktop users. I've also put map objects. How many people out there use map objects or have used map objects? Quite a few of you. It's very popular. And uh, I know a lot of you are quite sad when you can no longer get it. And we've been listening to you. And this is some technology that I think that will really satisfy map objects users. As you've been developing, you've also been faced with a number of challenges. And you haven't held back at numerous developer summits coming to me and expressing some of them. Some of them friendly over a beer, some of them not quite so friendly. But uh, probably the biggest one is the complex object model. I spent a lot of my time 10 years ago flying around the world explaining to developers it's not really complicated. It might just be large, but it's, not too, it's really not too bad. If you invest a little bit of time, you can, uh, you can get up to speed. 10 years ago, when we shipped Arc Info 8, we had 1,900 public types, which it was a pretty big object model. Last year, when we shipped ArcGIS 10, we had 11,000 public types in Arc objects. So we have got bigger. And I will admit, some bits of it are a little bit complicated. Not all of it, but some bits are. And so it's definitely a barrier for you to get up to speed in building your custom applications. Now, I don't apologize for creating a huge object model. We've needed that object model to give you all the power of ArcGIS. What I can apologize for is exposing a lot of our internal architecture to you developers. You're not building a generic GIS platform. You're building focused applications, and you want to do that quickly and efficiently. And so we're working hard to make that easier for you. With the large object model comes a large amount of disk space required to install it, also memory requirements just to run it. And a thing that we've been hearing increasingly more and more important for you is you want native 64-bit uh, code execution. More and more now, the machines that come on your uh, uh, deployments are 64 bits. And you can't exploit the full power of the platform if you're running a native 32-bit application on it. Our APIs, we do have APIs for .NET and Java and C++, but they are really based on our COM internal architecture. They have a very strong COM bias. And that's something that uh, is becoming more of an impediment for you moving forward. The other thing is, if you pick your target, I want to use Engine. I'm going to build an Engine application, or I'm going to use Arc Reader to build my application. It forces you down an architectural road that the, when you want to change later, you've got to do a lot of rewriting of code, because the object models are different. So we want to try and flatten that out and build on top of a new object model moving forward. And finally, the thing that really, uh, you, you, you've built your application, you're ready to deploy it, and then you find it's actually quite complicated to deploy it to ArcGIS users, because we don't really support side-by-side -side deployments. So you've got to pick the, uh, you've got to pick the, the, uh, the version of the software, and you might have to build two or three different versions of your application so you can deploy it to 9.3, 9.3.1, and, and 10. So to meet these challenges, we've built something new. We've got a brand new architecture. We've reused a lot of the internal bits that we use to build Arc objects, but we've packaged it up, and we've got a new architecture that has, at its heart, uh, GIS capabilities but it doesn't have a lot of the extra bits and pieces ar around it. We've focused hard on keeping the footprint small, getting the key functionality in there, made sure that the, the display from the ground up has been built to be fast. Easy deployment was one of the key requirements when we started the project. It had to be easy to deploy. And we also wanted to make sure that it worked on Windows and on Linux, 32-bit and 64-bit. And also, we've looked hard at the APIs that we wanted to expose to you as developers. So we're using WPF, Java, or C++ and Qt. And these APIs are inherently asynchronous in their programming pattern, something that more and more uh, modern uh, environments are fully exploiting. 
So I said that it's built on top of, the, and we've reused some of the, the bits uh, of, of of Arc objects. That's good news because it means that you'll be able to leverage a lot of your investment into the platform as well. Just like it's important for us to be able to reuse our work, it's important for you to be uh, re reusing your work.